I give him my <laughs> iPad to download <laughs> shit and I'm on the plane. And all of a sudden, you know, this <laughs> song come out. I'm like, I'm looking, what the f is this he put on? Oh, that was a fun. I'll never forget that about Joey. That was a good rib. And I couldn't rib him back because I was up in the plane. You know, no Wi Fi, no nothing. I couldn't get a hold of him. So I was like, I waited till I landed. Hey, <laughs> what was this that you posted? Hey, don't ever put this song on my iPod again. Oh my goodness. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and we want to thank our main sponsor. That's right, Knox Pro. Knox Pro Entertainment located in Van Nuys, California. A. Hey, you want to learn from the best? Well, come train with the best. And we're talking about Knox Pro Entertainment. Log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com to find out more. Big Quiche. How you doing, man? Yes, sir. I'm here, Joey. I made it. Yes. And I'm, I'm happy to be back in L.A., man. And uh, Did you just get back from Tejas? Uh, yeah. I, uh, where the hell was I? I was in San Antonio. Yes. For the Nostalgia Con. And uh, it was great meeting the fans out there. I was out there for three days. And, uh, you know, I, I, man, I dropped the ball. I had no idea that Sunday was Mother's Day. Oh. I know it. But I made it back in time mm -hmm. and, you know, send the mm -hmm. wife some flowers, mm -hmm. you know, unexpectedly, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so I made it home and I'm well rested, man. Oh, good, good. Um, let me ask you, while you're out there in Tejas, um, Funko Pops, I'm sure, were flowing like a river. Yeah. How about the Sultan figure? Were there any Sultan figures out there? A lot there? of fans came out with the Sultan figures, nice. man. Uh, you know, we uh, did pretty good, pretty good amount of Sultan signed out there. Uh, you know, according to their stories, mm -hmm. they're saying that, the fans are saying this is one of the best action figures of myself out there. So, you know, they, they did a great job with WWE and was on there. Mattel, you know, you get them exclusive at, uh, at the Target. So they did a real good job. It makes me happy. When I hear my fans, like you know, you know, tell me about the the details and what they thought about the action figure. That figure is also available at rikishifatu.com. Yes, sir, and it comes signed, comes signed, and free delivery on top of that. I, I might just throw in a, you know, I care about my fans. Yes, I might sir. just throw in yes, a sir. extra eight by ten signed personally. So, yeah, we'll make sure you guys stop by and check it out. You know, rikishifatu. Dot com. There's the plug. There it is. So, uh, you yeah. know, there, uh, of course, as always, there's a lot to talk about. And first off, um, I uh, saw a, a message out there on the internet. Um, you were on the radio. You <laughs> were on. You were on uh, satellite radio. You were on Rock the Bells. DJ Epps. Shout out to DJ Epps uh, mm. for, for first of all uh, playing you on the on the radio. So wrestling aside, yeah. ha Hall of Famer. S set it to the side. Yeah. Did you ever think you'd your voice would be out on the radio rapping? I know, hell to the no. Um, you know, big shout out to DJ Epso. Yeah. You know what? It's uh, uh, you know, when I got the message, it was one of the students from Knox Pro, uh, OG Bear. Mm. You know, he sent it to DBS me Bear. Uh, yeah, on the feed there, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I had no idea. Like I'm trying to, but I can hear him. He was so excited, you know, that, that I made it on to... And I'm over there. I, I do follow Rock the Bells, LL Cool J's uh, station on, on uh, Instagram. Wow. But, you know, I was just trying to hear what he was saying. And, you know, Bear was just so excited that the song, his trainer, was, you know, his mentor was on the radio of hip-hop of Rock the Bells. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, the only thing I can say is... You know, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. You know, big shout out to my team, you know, with Frankie and, and the crew backstage and, you know, for making this uh, this magic happen as far as, uh, you know, my love for hip hop. And you know what? We we working, we working in the lab. By the time I get home on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. you know, I come in 5.30 before the show starts, uh, before we record our show and so forth. And then, you know, I'm, I'm we try to knock out at least uh, two to, you know, one to two tracks. And but yes, man, I, I, you know, I'm just hey, what can I say, man? I'm just honored to, you know, to have our work be played uh, out throughout the whole world. Well, you know what? Um, when I first heard that you were on the radio, yeah, I, I was uh, of course proud because obviously your platform is from all the hard work you put in the ring. So thank you. The name, your likeness, everything about you was because of all the hard work you put in the ring. 
And that's what got you onto the radio. And you know what? So for, for me, man, I, I'm, I'm proud of you as a student. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, just to just to hear your you on Syria because that's satellite. Yeah. Everybody has it. You know what I mean? That's not like you're the- you, you know. I, I don't even think it hit me yet. You know, I, and you know, it's I don't I don't do this for any clout. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the end of the day, uh-huh. it's like you know I got to stand by behind my words of what I'm teaching you kids. Yes, you know, sir. don't be afraid to to jump in and try different things. But I'm not a rapper, professional rapper. By no means, but I do love hip hop. Yes, sir. And so, you know, being with the creative uh, crew behind the scenes, you know, my producer of, uh, you know, Frankie, you know, we 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 put it down. And then I got my man Michael. You know, mm. we we working on another banger. It, it just as long as we can put out uh, beautiful music and uh, you know music that's uh, that was uh, close to me, mm. like you know these certain every track you hear. You know, the sample beats are something that meant to me. It helped me. So it's my way of paying homage uh, to those that, you know, that uh, put out that track, you know, back in the day when I was listening. So thank you, man. I, you know, I, I hope that what I'm doing can, uh, you know, uh, you guys can take a page out of it. You know what I mean? Don't, if you're an actor, don't, don't be afraid to jump into music because everybody sings. You know, we, I'm, I'm a shower singer. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Barry White, <laughs> you know, I just feel like I got that voice right because I know I talk Barry White when I'm, yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah. I'm talking mm. to my. Yeah, but that's another story. That's right, you know. And, and so, it, who, who's to say, you know, Kishi might be putting out an album like you know, um, like a love album for the ladies or something. You know, I just big fan of uh, Teddy Pendergrass. That's right. You know what I mean? TKO. I love TKO. You know, Barry White. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 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 Uncle Charlie. So you're saying on your album that's going to be coming out, uh, the fans can expect to hear different varieties of music? Yeah, most definitely. You know, again, these uh, when you hear the music mm-hmm. on the beat of the music, the uh-huh. sampling, you're going to know that's personal to me. Yeah. It, there's a meaning behind that. And, you know, uh, I plan to shoot a lot of, like, backstage, uh, you know, video after the album to be connected onto the CD. Mm-hmm. Uh, this way, you know, I, I want the fans to have something... Uh, that's, uh, you know, they can take with them. You know what I mean? Rather than just listening onto the radio and uh, all the, you know, music platforms. I want, it's like signing an autograph of something. And being, this is my first, first uh, ever album, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's personal. And I hope the fans enjoy it. Oh, I know they've been enjoying it because what you've done thus far, I've uh, seen a plethora of music uh, of videos on social media of people yeah. doing reaction videos to your music. Right on. So uh, I can't tell you. I, I cannot. I, 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 I cannot yeah. even uh, count how many videos I have seen of people reacting to your music. Right. Um, and, and different areas of the world, too. So, right so what you're doing is landing out there uh, in the world, not only professional wrestling, but of mu- in music. And music. All right, come on with a big yeet for that one. That's for everybody. Double yeet. The double yeet. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, man. I, you know, right. that that is just, uh, to, to me... Um, uh, bananas, but I'm, I'm just yeah. so proud uh, to see all this good stuff happening. Thank you, man. Because you know what? No, honestly, because you deserve it, and it's another lesson to people out there. Whether you're a professional wrestler, whether what, no matter what you're doing in your life, hard work pays off. Because this man, yeah. just by knowing this man, he he took no short no shortcuts. He didn't cut no corners. He absolutely put in the work. And, and, and it transcended into a whole other industry, a whole other uh, industry where you ain't got to take no bumps and you get to live out some of your passions. And I know you love hip hop because I've loaded your iPod, your iPod with music <laughs> back in the days. And I know that you don't like no Archie's. Uh, honey, honey. Bum, 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 bum. Boy, if I can only get to you back when I was up in the plane, 30,000 feet up in the, in the air, and I was like listening. It went from Tupac to Biggie, and then all of a sudden, Archie. Honey, honey. I was like, what in the hell did you? If the if the people could only see me in first class, boy, my face, you know, you know, when you listen to pop, 
hip hop, you, you you know, your head is bouncing, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Archie came out and was like, oh, hell no. <sighs> and, you know, in wrestling, this is the part where the boys, they get to rip you, right? And I said, Joey, Joey got me. He, no. waits, till, he waits till I get home, no. boy. He got me. But that's funny that I made you hot at uh, 30,000 <laughs> feet in the air. Uh, it's mind-boggling to me. But you know uh, what? Um, Drake Master, how we doing over there, Baby Cakes? Oh, man. He, he, he's like just... Uh, he, he's like just dissecting stuff over there, man. Ooh, what are those? My goodness, these glasses are fancy. Right this is like, I feel like this is a goblet. Speaking of Gangrel, this is like a, a goblet. And this, is like, <laughs> this, one, um, this one I call off the top. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? Honestly, uh, bringing it back, running it back to yeah. you on the radio, Monwia. Monwia, there we go. Salute. Ooh. Wow. Oh, I like Man, that. Drink Master always delivers. Delivers. He never seems to disappoint us. Like S.D. Jones. Yeah, S.D. Jones delivery. Damn, man, that that was really Delicious. good. That was really good. Wow. And, and and the presentation of the glass too. It's like pretty, blood red. That's pretty good. Like the bloodline. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> gang grill. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to spit this out in somebody. Here. Okay, okay. So man, yeah. we're, we're gonna bring it to uh uh, uh of course. Uh, SmackDown. Okay. What's going on now? Uh, I, I want to say this is one of Tama Tonga's first uh, singles matches on television. Okay. And, he, of course, he got the victory. Um, and he looked pretty damn impressive. He defeated uh, Angelo Dawkins, and uh, he looked really impressive. Out comes, uh, of course, your son, uh, Solo Sokoa. He ran interference, and mm. Tama was able to capitalize on that, and he got his first win. But it wasn't until after that what, what really stuck out to me is when Paul Heyman, you know, when everyone's doing the the one up, Paul right. Heyman's in the back, and then your son Solo, you know, he's dead center, and then he looks back to see Paul Heyman and what what he's doing, right. and, and then and then Paul Heyman, oh no, no, I'm, I'm throwing up the, it, that was one of the most funniest moments I've seen in wrestling in a long time. But it also brings up a great question: What is the the, the distrust that? Um, is brewing right now. What what reason would uh, Solo have to not trust uh, the wise man Paul Heyman right now? Because the wise man. Yes, sir. Go back and do the history. Go do the research on the wise man. You know, as of now, you you know, I really don't trust none of them. You know, I mean, Solo's got the wise man's got. He's got his tribal chief. I can almost you know I can almost tell you that you know Solo is not a he's not an idiot. He knows what's happening behind the scenes and in front of him. He can feel the vibes. He's been trained for uh, for everything to see it coming a mile away. And so at the end of the day, it's I think it's, uh, you know, to, to be able to see those type of actions, you know, amongst himself from Solo to, uh, to uh, Paul Heyman, it makes for, it makes for uh, a good... A good uh, hang around and see. Exactly. A, a because good hang around and see because what's going to happen. Because, you know? Yes, because you know <laughs> what? Because if they do get rid of Paul Heyman, uh, what other wise men could be available? Well, I know nah, that. Let's gonna stop throwing that in there. No. I mean, I get it. You know, probably wouldn't make sense, but, you know, it, it, yeah. Damn it, every time I keep trying to leave out, you guys keep trying to pull, pull me back, back in. That's right. You know? And, of course, uh, like, I'm not saying no, I won't. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, hey, uh, I, I, I'll see it coming a mile away. Yes, sir. And I'll know when it's time for me to throw my name in the hat. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, we we going to, at the end of the day, we're going to make sure that this is going to be an, an even playing field for the bloodline on both sides. Are you guys listening? An even playing field for the bloodline on both sides. So take it for what it's uh, for what it's worth. Uh, let let's just see what happens for the future as the you know uh, you know Raw and SmackDown continues to showcase uh, what's happening as far as in the bloodline and. You know, Yeet, you know, Jay, Jay Uso, man, what what a what a hell of a run, you know. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, just caught a few of the, you know, the King of the Ring and so forth. Third round. 
third round. Well, He's getting closer. Go. He's and getting closer. Man, just to see the... For me, when I watch my my, my son out there performing, mm -hmm. or any of my boys, mm -hmm. I'm always watching the reaction of the crowd. <laughs> you know? and uh, the charts right You know, now. to see him out there just pretty much have the crowd in the palm of his hands. You know, you got all the fly bugs coming back. You know what I mean? People are, are saying they're hey, comparing it to Bray Wyatt's. Ain't that a trip? Bray Wyatt's one of my favorite wrestlers, right? And to see him, you know, his spirit in there, because when you there. see that, mm -hmm. you know the friendship between the two. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that has to feel so amazing to know that my friend's spirit is around and here I am to carry it on. You're not taking his place, but what he has, you know, uh, was remembered for as far as in the crowd, they would turn on their phones and lights. Mm -hmm. And now you have a friend that was dear to you is able to continue that on and 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 make it in, you know, uh, make it the way that the fans receive it, you know? Yes, sir. So it's a, it's a beautiful day, you know? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so proud of Jay. Uh, you know, Solo Sakura, uh, we got to see what his kid's mind is at. Right, right. And uh, speaking of the bloodline and speaking of the future, going forward, Tonga Loa is now uh, referred to as Tonga Loa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, they, they changed that. Uh, what do you th Why do you think the reason to... Why do you think they did that? Uh, who, who knows? It could be, you know... Uh, I don't know. You uh, think the licensees? Uh, who, who knows? But, you know, like I said before, when I went to TNA, hey, the name changes, but the man remains the same. Ooh. Hey, let me go ahead and flip that to you again. The name changes, but the man remains the same. Okay. That's a T-shirt. That's a web domain. <laughs> That's the name of our next drink. All right. That uh, is uh, something. And, and you only get that from experience, right? Yes, sir. Over. And so for me, like, you you can't... Those two uh, kids that are there, you know, Tom and his brother, Don Law, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, they're, they're, they're kids are family-related as far as with Uncle Haku and so forth. And, we, you know, you, you, these kids are... I couldn't wait for them to come to WWE. You know, they, they've done so much out there, the hard work and... You know, uh, you know, building their brand out there in Japan, New Japan, mm -hmm. and it was awesome to see them. You know, finally come home. You know, uh, the bloodline, the WWE is home. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, to be able to see them come, and not you know just go right to, right in the angle. Mm -hmm. You know, they're only put there uh, for the simple fact that they belong there. Yes, sir. Nothing else. Nothing more. There, you know, you got Roman that's out the picture now, Jimmy that's out the picture now. And now you, here comes, you know, Solo with, you know, his crew of the, what they like to call the Bloodline 2.0. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the the, the two, uh, the brothers, Tama and uh, uh, Tonga Lord, they're doing a great job, you know. They both look great. They look fresh. So nice to see fresh faces out there. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Uh, being involved into the Bloodline and, and family at that. Yes, sir. Let's let's talk about the the uh, the 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 most anticipated debut yeah. in recent memory. Jacob Fatu, your nephew. Mm. We're talking about even playing fields. Where would you place him in the bloodline? Um, you know what? That's a, that's a good question, Joey. Um, I kind of see Jacob because of all the speculations of him jumping into the bloodline. I kind of see Jacob coming in alone. I see Jacob, be it SmackDown or Raw, just coming back into that old TV match. Three minute, three minutes annihilate people. You know, just go to Raw. Three minutes annihilate people. So he's not really with a brand. Because if he stays stuck in the brands and they announce that he's with Raw, now you kind of already, okay, when is he going to go with Jay? But if he's committed to SmackDown, the fans are going to say, oh, when is he going to go with the bloodline? So he needs to come in different. I kind of see Jacob, you know, honestly, I would, I would love to see Jacob run through top talent roster 
on both sides. And then finally, when the time is right, that he would be involved into the bloodline, meaning going up against either the Rock or Roman Reigns or Solo Sokoa. You got to give that match to the... In order for people to get the best out of Jacob... Yes, sir. My feelings is Jacob needs to dance with family members because now his comfort level, you know, he can trust, like, you know, Roman will take care of him as far as whatever, Jimmy. You know, there's there's not that much pressure. But when you're dancing with somebody else that you didn't grow up with and it's a name, now you got that in the back of your head. Is this guy here, is he trying to take too much Am I am I giving him too much, or is he just gonna you know he sees me being built up, is he just gonna be a selfish wrestler, and try to take me? Now, here's what I'm gonna say to people like that. In case they go that route, I'm gonna say to all the wrestlers out there, if you don't know my nephew Jacob, I'm gonna put it out there on blast. Listen, he was a street hustler, street fighter. And then when I say in the hood or whoop your ass, you know, hardcore was Jacob before hardcore. And he's not afraid of anybody. It doesn't give a damn. Like once he snaps into where he feels like, okay, this guy here is not doing business. There's another side of Jacob that you don't want to see. I've seen that. Side. And the most on the flip side, he's the most funniest guy. <laughs> he's the most <laughs> humble guy. He the, he's the most, you know, guy to uh, take his shirt off his back to give to you. Mm -hmm. But this is the part here that, you know, I've uh, we've trained Jacob as far as uh, inside the square circle and outside the square circle. It's like sometimes people who you think is your friends in the back yeah. locker room, but once they get out there, they either have a, a brain fart and just start, you know, potatoing you and blah, 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 and forgetting spots or whatever. And in the meantime, you know, you need to learn how to, you know, like you were always trained, to adapt to that. Yes, sir. And so, you know, I, I want, uh, hopefully, WWE books Jacob accordingly. I've mentioned this before. To get the best out of this kid, you got to book him with the right people. Yes, sir. Because Jacob is, a, you know, what, a 240, 250, amazing. You know, he moves it, like a lightweight. Moves like a lightweight. I mean, he's believable in all this stuff that he does. And so, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a cross from, from his uh, father, the Tonga kid, and a beast like his uncle, Umanga. Okay. You know, and uh, as you can see, like, you know, he doesn't wear too much fancy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love just wearing just the tights that you got with your tribal and just go. It's not, it's not, a, it's not like for me to him, mm -hmm. like looking at him, it's not a fashion show for Jacob. Like, you know, you don't need the fashion to be able to get him over, just let him go out there and work. Yes, sir. Just let him go out to work and let him be himself. So you said it exactly That's my right. take on Jacob, you know. Good yes, luck. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, Kavika sends his love. I was talking with him earlier. Talova, Kavika. Big yeah. shout out to the to the uh, vampire warrior himself, the one and only Gangrel. Yes, sir. We was talking earlier, and he told me to send his love. I love um, us. He also sent me a, a, a video that I was never aware of. Yeah. It's actually of Jim Cornette talking about um, your nephew, Jacob Fatu, and he's talking about that if uh, if he he would come out of retirement to manage him. Yeah. Now, my, my we were talking about where you would place him in the bloodline uh, or coming into the WWE, his debut, and you said you'd have him uh, alone, which I think is uh, that is amazing. Um, but... What if he had a manager? Not that he needs one, because we know that managers are are, are pretty much commonplace for re for wrestlers who, who may may not be that great on the mic. But everybody knows that Jacob Fatu's mic skills are, are strong AF. Um, wh what do you think? If, um, does he need a manager? What if it was Jim Cornette? What do you think about Jim Cornette? No, absolutely not. Yes, sir. Absolutely not. Um, you know, uh, listen, Jacob doesn't need a manager. And if uh, anybody would be a, van a manager, you'd probably be looking at the guy that'll walk out, Jacob. Um, you know, it's just, again, you know, Jim knows this. Like, you know, why why we do the hard work and then somebody steps in to take the gravy? 
Yes, sir. You know what I mean? It ain't like we like cavemen from back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like you, you looking at an educated Samoan man sitting right in front of you. And yes, so, sir. you know, I know my ABCs. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't but it ain't that easy for me to carry a racket if I wanted to. And so, yeah, you know, listen, you know, stay in your lane, Oos. You or know Lincoln I mean? Continental. Or Lincoln Continental. When you see the lights come on in the back and when you're leaving the building, you better recognize. You know, <laughs> so at, at, at the end of the day, you know, that's my job to sit around in the back scene mm -hmm. to protect family members. You yes, know? sir, yeah. You know, not to say they're not smart. They're smart, but... You know, you got to you gotta understand, like, you know, we're not doing the hard work for anybody. We're doing the hard work for ourselves, for the fans, to be able to bring something that's putting asses in seats. The day you feel like the bloodline ain't the timeline, the mm -hmm. bloodline ain't got shit to do in wrestling anymore. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's all the proof is there. The numbers don't lie. So at the end of the day, thank you. Uh, you know, with a, uh, it's not a surprise to me that people are waiting for Jacob to, you know, they're trying to throw their name in the hat. You know what I mean? But at, at the end of the day, Jake, if you're listening, you know, speak your truth, son. Uh, you know, you don't need nobody, you know. And it's okay to you to voice your, uh, your, uh, your opinion or your suggestion, you know, to Triple H and those that are, that are, in, uh, that are in charge of that, you know. But, mm. yeah, it, uh, you know, that's one thing that kind of gets underneath my skin. It's like, Paul, we, we go back away. The wise man, you know, this is just personal friendship. We go back a long way. I mean, my kids were like five years old and, mm -hmm. you know, running around in Atlanta studio, WCW days, you know. And this man here was the guy that, you know, gave me an opportunity at my first contract with the SST, WCW. So he, he he's done a part in putting food on the table of the Fatu brand and the Anwai brand versus another guy that just jumps in and want to throw their name in the hat and they don't even know what the type of toilet paper I use. <laughs> they don't even know what type of food we like, what type of people we are, you know, and you, you want to come and, you know, be a part of the, you know, get on this gravy train. Right. But I, I say take your ass in the back and, uh, you know, start cooking back there because, uh, you you ain't jumping onto the food platter here. We see food and lobster and steaks now. And there it is. You know, uh, there was some more news. And uh, speaking of Kavika, the gang, uh, Gangrel Vampire Warrior, um, yeah. Edge, Adam Copeland did a, uh, uh, yeah. an interview. And he had uh, talked about uh, how um, he had an idea to use uh, David at WrestleMania 39. Yeah. And uh, the WWE, the higher ups, said um, no. They they didn't greenlight it because, um, and this is an interview that's straight from his mouth. He said it was because uh, uh, he was told nobody was going to remember David. Nobody was going to remember Gangrel. Mm. What do you, what do you think about that? Do you think that's accurate? No, I I, I think like uh, you know, obviously the power of TV. You can forget about somebody or don't remember. But, I mean, we're talking about, a, 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 you know, a 15 million people, if that, if not more, you know. And, and Gang Grill, I mean, once he, he comes out, he was a part of the Attitude Era. Once you hear that song, boy, you know, he, he had that. He, it almost, when I used to watch him come out, it almost felt like he was like a, a, a hip-hop vampire. Because he was just bobbing his head and coming out to that swag. tune. Swag. He had swag he had, before swag was swag. Dude, he was swag before Edge and Christian. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah. He took two Canadian cats, and, you know, and here comes uh, uh, Kavika man, doing his thing. But, yeah, I, I, I think that's uh, that's not a valid thing to to say that nobody would not remember, you know, a guy like I think like, that's kind of like, crazy because there's legions yeah, well, of brood fans. Well, I mean, listen, I, I'm the type of person that... He say, she say, mm -hmm. right? Until mm -hmm. I seen it, or, mm -hmm. you know, I would have just, maybe it's time for Kavika to put out a disc, <laughs> a disc hip-hop track or something. Cause well, I know back in the day. Cat, Cat Williams, all they asses, you know? Because ain't, ain't nobody safe with me now. And and on that note, Big Keish, uh, I want to uh, give you a big uh, salute, Mamuya, yeah. for all the uh, good stuff you got going on. Do you have any final words right now? Well, uh, I do want to say tomorrow, Mm. Tomorrow we are in uh, what is it? Adelanto. 
Adelanto City. Stadium. The stadium, right? We're working on a stadium. Rikishi Entertainment is going to be in a stadium in yeah. Adelanto, California. Uh, and so make sure to come on out. It's Major Vibes. I've been promoting this a lot on my IG. And listen, I'm a big, no, 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 uh, it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of island reggae. And uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Believe this, right? I'm so excited to meet Fiji. Jay Boog, who's yeah. one of the headliners. Yeah. You yeah. know, Spawn Breezy's going to be there. Yeah. I'm uh, looking at the lineup right now. Miss B. Royal. She's, look at, I'm, I'm memorizing all this stuff without even looking at the yeah, list. Yeah, you know what's up, man. Uh, uh, man. Who else is going to be on there? Man, we got uh, uh, Sao Siva. Okay. Sao Siva's going to be there. Miss B. Royal. Miss B. Royal. There's going to be a Tonga dance. Come on. Okay. We got L.A.B. in the house. All right. And, of course, at 6.15 p.m., there's a Lifetime Achievement Award for... The one and only Mr. Uh, Rikishi Jr. Fatu over thank there. Thank you, thank you. So uh, there's going to be that going on. And if you are in the Victorville area, the Barstow area, yeah. the San Bernardino area, area, please, yeah. off the top uh, fans, come out, support, show your love. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on. There's going to be a lot of great smells in the air if you pick up what I'm laying down. Right. So please, come on out. Uh, we're going to be there wrestling there's going to be a lot of great matches. We're going to have a lot of uh, uh, stuff in store for you. So the wrestling is going to start at 1.30. Right. Uh, let's see. For all you Jay Boog fans out there, if you want to come out and you just want to see Jay Boog, but I, I highly recommend you come out at 12.30 when doors open. There's going to be an Ava ceremony at a 1 p.m. And, of course, that's Ava, at 1.30. Ava, Ava ceremony. Did I say Ava? Yeah, you said I'm Ava. I'm Latino, so I, you know, I see Ava. Yeah, I see yeah. Ava, Ava. Ava. Ava, A-V-A. -A. Ava. Ava. Okay, thank you for smarting me up, uh, right. smarting up on that. And then, of course, uh, you know, we got the Tonga Dance at 510, Lab at 525, Lifetime Achievement at 615, 645, Spawn Breezy, 745, Fiji. Come on. And then the headliner, the main event, 9 p.m., is a J bug uh, and hopefully run up, run up. One day we're gonna get the collaboration. Oh my goodness! Of J bug and one. Hey man, Rikishi Fatu. That would be a blessing. I got the I got the rights on for it. Let's let's see if it'll take up uh, my request. So, but listen, I, I do want to say that I'd like to thank the city of Alianto. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, Mayor Reyes, is uh, him and his beautiful wife and his team has been putting this together. This is their third event. Okay. And this is the first time that uh, that they had wrestling there. And and uh, and so, you know, it's uh they're 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 looking at having uh, well over four to five, six thousand people. Okay. You know, they they'd have uh, they'd had uh, a lot of uh, uh, groups back in the day, you know, in the past, like uh, Common Kings and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be huge. I'm I am truly excited. You know, it feels good where I don't have to fly no place. Yeah. I'm just going to be driving. We're going to be there That's the right. night, night before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so make sure you guys go to your, uh, get your tickets to the website. It's on uh, Major Vibes. Follow them on their uh, on their in, uh, Instagram. And, uh, you know, get your tickets. It's, the show's going to start about, you know, 1 o'clock. Doors open and everything at 1230. And we're just going to have a blast all the way through. And then they got what I'm really looking forward for is the pop-up tents. There's going to be a lot of pop-up tents, a lot of different food. Ooh. You know, we, of course, we're going to have great music, but they're going to have a lot of different foods out there. They're going to be some, if you're a ganja smoker, Ooh. you know, you like a little bit of that, 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 you know, to make you back, 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 you know. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be on with it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'll stop by. You know, I'm thinking about dropping something like Kishi Kush. I was just going to say, when this show's Kishi over, let's Kush. talk more about Kishi Kush. As a matter of you know, fact, let's practice. Let's, let's, let's. You know, Kishi Kush. Yes, Kishi that sounds Kush. so good. Yeah, it's, 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 if it sounds good, it should make you feel good. Mm. And if it make you feel good, it's going to make you move good. There it is, right there. there. Is. I think that's what's on the package. Yes, sir. <laughs> but listen, hey, you know, again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. As always, Joey, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And remember this, my last few words, it's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up. And I'm out. Mung we out. Mung we out.